question 26. Figure 26.1 shows the variation of displacement y with position x of a progressive transverse wave on a stretch string at a particular instant. So because it's a displacement, uh, sorry, a displacement against position type graph, then this is uh, what I tell my students is you've got to think of this one as being a photograph of the wave. So we're seeing all positions, but only at one time. The motions of particles A and B on the string is analysed over a short period of time. The distance between the positions of A and B is half a wavelength of the wave. The particles A and B have the same speed. So say, state one difference between the motions of these particles. Well, because they are half a wave separated by half a wavelength, we, we can know that these particles must be in antiphase. So I would say their difference is um, they are moving in different directions. One will be going up, one will be going down. We can't tell from the diagram which way they're going because we don't know which way the wave is moving, but they are moving in opposite directions. Okay. Now let's move on to part B, or part, part two of A, sorry. Uh, the particle A oscillates with a frequency of 75 hertz. The distance between the positions of A and B is 40 plus or minus two centimeters. Calculate the speed V of the transverse wave on the string and the absolute uncertainty in this value. Okay, so um, I would say that we would need to go between V equals F lambda. <coughs> where V is the speed of the wave. Um, if we take our wave, so V, go away, V equals 75 and uh, remember in the first part it says that this is half a wavelength so our combined wavelength is going to be double this distance which is 80 centimeters but we're going to want to put that into meters so let's make that look like a zero that's going to give us 60 meters per second and we need to work out the absolute uncertainty. So what I would do is I would say, well, if we've got this plus or minus two meters per second, so what would that be um, in terms of the frequency? So if I do the absolute uncertainty, so let's go 0 0.02, and if I multiply that by my uh, frequency, which is 75, then that comes out with being three meters per second, so I would say plus or minus three meters per second. Okay, now onto part B. I, um, a stretch rubber cord has its fixed ends at points X and Y. The middle of the cord is lifted vertically and then released. A stationary wave pattern with one loop is formed by the vibrating cord. Explain how a stationary wave pattern is produced in this arra arrangement. Okay, so usually we would be talking about um, sending incident waves in and having them reflect, but it's telling us so uh, that this is being plucked and then let go. So then during that initial one, the incident waves are both going to move out towards X and Y independently and reflect and then superimpose to form the stationary wave. So I would say uh, the waves reflect at X and Y and the reflected waves superimpose Um,
to form the stationary wave. Now I would have, uh, if I hadn't have seen the mark scheme beforehand, I would have gone on to say uh, why you got an anti-node in the centre and nodes at the other ends if I'd have been sitting this in the exam. So we would get anti-nodes where the waves are meeting in phase and we would have nodes where the waves are meeting in anti-phase. Still, the mark scheme for this particular one didn't put it, but uh, who's to say in the next one that they are going to ask that or want to see it. Part two then. The stationary wave pattern shown in figure 26.2 is produced in the laboratory. Describe how the wavelength of the transverse wave on the stretch cord can be determined. Well, if we look here, this is uh, a node. We've got a node here, and this is half a wave, because if I was then going to carry on drawing it, there would be my full wave. So how the wavelength of it would be double the distance between x and y.